Hey guys, uh, I'm here to do another recording of some JavaScript problems uh, on Code Wars. Uh, as you can see, uh, from my last video, I'm still 8Q, uh, level 8, and I am hitting these rank ups. So you can do different stuff down here from like random, beta, practice and repeat. Uh, I think when you hit fundamentals, you'll stay on the same level, or maybe not, I'm not sure. But right now, I'm just trying to rank up, so we'll go ahead and do that option. Alright, um, so although I'm 8, they're giving me a level 6 Q, uh, level 6 level. So let's tr uh, go ahead and try this array.diff, that's the name of this problem. <clears throat> Your goal in this kata is to implement a difference function which subtracts one list from another. It should remove all values from list A which are present in B. Okay, so if a value is present in B, all of its occurrences must be removed from the other. Gotcha. So, pretty much just combining it, and if a number is already in there, then get rid of it, and like not even putting it in. And so, a couple things are running in my mind right now. Um, I'm wondering maybe I should use the the XOR, or if I should just go ahead and just do like index of checking it, and then. Um, checking like going through the array and using index of if I were to do that if I were to just create like go through this first array go to that second array do like index of stuff like that then the time complexity is going to be really bad but that's the simplest way to do it and um, I'm not sure if I've I've known code works to care about time complexity I'm not sure if they're going to care about it too much I do know that they have this like 33,000 millisecond rule and if I did like a um, a loop inside of a loop um, it would probably be over 3000 milliseconds but let's go ahead and try that because that's the simplest that we have so far and so um, how about we're gonna go ahead and create a a unique array um, and we'll simply go through this uh, a loop so let I equals zero uh, is less than a dot length. So this is the first this is the first array that we're gonna go through and and so if um this element the current element we're looking at a of i if it is uh oh no well so we're gonna use the index of method index of so we're checking it inside the b checking the B array and if that element is not in the index of that means so if it equals negative one then what are we going to do we're going to this statement here proves that it's not in there so we're going to push into the unique array unique uh, push we're going to put in there and pretty much going to have to do the same thing for the B array uh, so let's go ahead and try that uh, I believe doing leaving the i there is fine because in the for loop it reinitializes. I hope. Um, let's go ahead and change all these a's to b's and see if that will work. And the end we're gonna have to return the unique array. Uh, I don't know if they cared about order or anything, but if they if they did, we'll find out. We'll attempt that. And oh, okay. A was empty. B was 1 and 2, expected empty. Okay, is that in our instructions? Because um, if they wanted a, an array of unique stuff, and if 1 and 2 are not in A, then shouldn't we get an array of 1 and 2? Uh, let's see. Should remove all values from list A, which are present in list B. Okay, so I guess it... If, a value is present in B, all of its occurrences must be removed from the other. Um, if a value is present in B, all of its occurrences... So right now I'm thinking maybe it doesn't go both ways. Maybe it should remove all values from list A, which are present in list B. So anything in here that's in here, get it, get out. And so... If a value is present in B, 
all of its occurrences must be removed from the other. Okay, so if anything is in here, that's in here, then take it out. The the wording is kind of kind of off. I would ideally I would ask someone for clarification, maybe some more examples, but um, maybe we can just take a look at this. Uh, I don't know if you guys would agree with me, but it does sound kind of weird. Um, obviously, well, I guess the index of and this doesn't really doesn't affect it too much because I guess the arrays are just so small. But um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, time complexity, that's just uh, how I guess how long it takes for an algorithm to run. Um, Big O, go go ahead and go look that up if you're more if you're curious about it. Um, I just noticed my format thing formatting is just terrible right there. And so A was empty and B was this and they expected the empty array. Um, okay. So A had nothing, B has something, and if I created a unique array, I assume that I would have one and two, they wanted nothing. So the key must be in here, and I'm just constantly reading it over because it's not clicking in my head. It should remove all values from list A which are present in B. Okay. So if I just took this, it should remove all values from list A which are present in B. All values in A which was nothing. I, if anything was in here that matches that, I remove it. And so there was nothing in here, and so I took this and I didn't remove anything. So that's that step one. If a value is if a value is present in B, okay. If a value is present in B, all of its occurrence should be removed from the other. What do you, what the freak do you mean by other? You mean the answer? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. How about this? I'll just create for the sake of passing this. I think I'm just gonna re maybe report this one as a as a really bad one. Uh, but let's go ahead and say like if either one of those are empty well let's see if either one of those are empty then uh return an empty array i guess so if a dot length zero or b dot length i'm just doing it both because i don't know maybe they're going to try to catch me later for the b one sometimes uh these tests aren't the ones that de uh, determine whether you pass it or not so i'm just going to count both of those arrays and we're going to return an empty array right there and so that should at least catch that so because it's going to catch that first a array and it's going to return that and i added in the b part because in case that was empty but look i feel another one um b was empty and expected that so let me just take that one out um, i think what i think guess what they meant to do was if anything in b wasn't that then take it out return array of A. Yeah, that's what they meant to say, I think. They meant to say, um, if anything is in B here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna create, so that we can see those two tests fail again. Um, okay, wait, no, they don't, they don't both fail. But, okay, let's take a look at this one right here. Um, I'm interpreting the, the question to be, if anything in B is an A, take it out, return A. That, that's simply stated, boom, you could do that. But what they decided to say was remove all values from list A, which are present in B. Um, that's kind of weird, because that would mean it has to be equally unique, especially given the second one saying if a value present in B is present in B, all of those occurrence must remove from the other. Um, so, yeah, you guys get the idea by now, I guess. Uh, look at that, 300, so I'm pretty sure they don't care about this, or at least the examples are too small, but we'll see. We'll see. Cool, all right, that passed, I think. Um, none, I'm not satisfied with this one at all. And so, there we go, that one was array.diff.